this is a rare piece. This is from England, and it was an insert. Uh, I can't I can't remember if you bought it, if you had to order it or whatever. But anyway, I think it was an insert in a Mojo magazine from over in Britain, and. Uh, up until I got this one, I'd only seen one other one. It's giant. It is giant. It's, uh, it's, uh, I love the pose. It's been linen backed. And uh, usually when you come through the door, that's the first thing somebody just jumps out at you. So that's a reason pretty cool. There. Uh, I do have, which I do not have presently displayed, but the movie standee of Love Me Tender, which was just sold at auction for $9,000. I happen to have it, but it's in that box right there. I haven't, I'm in the process of building a case. So where does it. yours come from? The I, one that sold for so much was in Memphis, right? Am I remembering this, that this right? This past auction. It was the one that was displayed in Memphis yes. when, when the movie uh, was premiered and Elvis and Gladys and Vernon and everybody was there. Right. That's the reason it these, sold for so these much. These were just in the larger theaters like New York, Chicago. A very few of them were put out. And uh, according to the Antiques Roadshow a couple of years ago, a lady in Minneapolis had one. And the lady that was an expert on it said, we only know of three or four of these that exist. Now, since that time, I've got knowledge of people, three or four other people. But they're not plentiful at all. So there's all. not a hundred of them. There oh, might be twenty. I, I would be surprised if there's twenty-five still intact. And one of them sold at this last auction. And uh, like I said, I'm in the process of putting a case for it. Uh, and another, look at what it says on here, friends. Yeah. Mr. Rock and Roll right. and the story he was born to play. <laughs> he was originally scheduled to do the Rainmaker uh, as a co-star. And he even dated the girl. Deborah Padgett? No, the, the girl that was right. in the Rainmaker. Right. Yeah. But Hal Wallace figured it was, uh, he was too big for that. And that for the money they were paying him, they waited and put him in this. He really wanted to be in it, though. Oh, I know he did. I know he did. That, uh, he was upset it, about that. Well, the book that I mentioned a few minutes ago will explain a lot of that. So mm -hmm. it'll give you some aspects of it you're, most people are not aware of. Now, this here... Uh, this is the white promotional poster that Colonel Parker printed up just for press conferences. There are very few of these. Now, one sold at an auction here this past uh, January and for about $3,200, but I have, in all my years, I've only seen two or three of these. Now, what makes this one unique is the guy that I bought it from owned the printing blocks to make them. So hmm. I, he threw that in, so I had the blocks for that so you could recreate that? I could if I was wanting to, but I hate reproductions of anything. That's just my own part. I would never, mm -hmm. I would never do that or, or allow anybody to do it. Mm -hmm. But I do own the blocks for it. So very cool. Uh, it's also under the table. It's under the table. Yeah. You got so you got stuff just hidden oh, under oh, there I've that got, are I've got that some. are uh, yeah. uh, huge. I could double what I've got out if I can just find the, the space for it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, which I'm well, in the process. I mean, you have a hole upstairs that you could. Oh, that's the wife's domain. <laughs> she said that's not coming. She up. said no, right? Downstairs is yours. Uh, I am working on a process. A guy, we think we've got an idea for putting it across the ceiling. So I have some big, some big pieces. <laughs> so we'll probably a way to hook it to the ceiling. Right. Well, right here, you can see a picture at a press conference of Elvis and right yeah, behind, that's behind him. him. Right. So that could even be that poster. It could be. I don't think that it is, there? but it could be. Yes. Yes, sir. I'd that's like very to, cool. For bragging rights, I'd like to say that, but that wouldn't be, you know, kosher, so to speak. Yes, so. sir. Very neat. Uh, I'm looking... For there was another one of these that was in the, uh, that's the way it is. It was used to advertise the on stage album. And if you see the part in the movie, that's the way it is where they're doing the promotional stuff where Colonel Parker's provided all the stuff. There's one there, but I've not ever been able to obtain one. I've never even seen one out at any auction or uh, fan dealers con or anything. So if somebody has one, contact me. And Absolutely. it's not this one, but it's another one. Advertising the 1970 LP on stage. It's on so, a thick cardboard and it folds out. It's used for record promotion. 
And uh, yeah, I'm in the market for one. You'd be interested. Absolutely. Uh, these are both American releases of uh, three sheet movie posters from Viva Las Vegas and Jailhouse Rock. And the reason they call them three sheets, the one sheet movie poster, it's like three of these turned sideways. That's why they call them three sheets. Right. So these are both hard to come by. And uh, both. I mean, they look brand new and they're giant. I made a bulk buy. And, uh, well, the guy, that guy from Texas I brought up, he, uh, he had a bunch of stuff and his wife told him not to bring it back home again. So I was able one night in Shoney's in Memphis, about two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> me and a buddy of mine and him worked out a deal. And, uh, so that's said, been a while back because oh, yeah. Shoney's was across the street from well, the Graceland. A lot of people don't know to this, the right. This is the one that was down off of Brooks Road on Mill Branch. Okay, so it's not the one by. It's, yeah. But yeah. there used to be one friends across the street from Graceland Absolutely. to the right. Absolutely. A lot of deals. Back went. in the day. Now that would have been close to in front or beside on the corner of Heartbreak Hotel. Mm -hmm. Is that on yes. Lonely Street? Am I thinking yeah, right? right? It would have been You're right correct. in there. You're mm -hmm. correct. Yes, sir. I remember when it was there. That's been way back. A lot of business took place there, too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, of course, the Elvis Con, during the day at the shows, and then at night, now this is four things really got organized. Everybody went out to what they called Elvis Town, which was a day's in, big monstrous day's in on Brooks Road, and they'd stay up three or four o'clock in the morning dealing out of their rooms. You'd walk in, they'd leave the doors open, and you'd walk in, you'd see something start Trading, buying, selling, whatever you wanted to do. And uh, that went on for years. I hate I hate that that went away. They've tore that place down, but uh, there's a lot of good deals went down That's there. Huge. Met it, was a lot. A, it was a big thing. Oh, absolutely. And it still is, is what's crazy, but there was people just bringing stuff. Right. And they were showing up, and you got to know these people, and after 40 years, it's like a big family as far as the, as the hardcore people. So I know who to contact if I'm looking for such and such. Yes, sir. So anyway, that's uh, really nice. I don't think I've left anything out. So, so friends, he, we were talking after we finished shooting, and he brought up that he wrote this book. Well, I, I was the uh, or co-wrote. He edited it. Rosalind Craner, Rosalind Craner, Steve Templeton, and Ted Young, right there. Right. Now, which man. is one of the very first. Now, this is second edition, but this is one of the very first Elvis collectible books. She did one a few years before on okay. her own. This was the first book on Elvis collectibles I ever really put out. Okay. And she sold the edition out, and later on. Me and Steve had made connections with her, and the three of us put this version so out. So you edited this version and added to it to create this version. Yes, this okay. is a different. This was a lot added to it, and then. So really, you're one of the very early Elvis collector experts. Well, that I'm, set pricing and determined what was out there and what wasn't out there and right. that kind of stuff. Does nope. that sound nope. reasonable? That, that's, 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 I, was, I was in the group. There's no one person responsible. There's another book by Mr. Templeton. And, uh, that and this was by Templeton, too, the one that you right. mentioned. This yep. is your friend, so you know Steve. Oh, I know him well. Uh, he knows this stuff backwards and forwards. Lives in Plainfield, Indiana, and... Uh, uh, a lot of times on his word of judgment, I would purchase, go after something because of the rarity. He knows where the certifications and all that's at. Um, let me see if I, there's another book. So I just wanted, I wanted to add this, friends, because oh. I want you to understand that this is not a guy that's just going places and buying posters. He's <laughs> choosing specific things, being sure that they're authentic. And he is an authority uh, in this subject. And he also has his friend, Steve Templeton, that is an authority on this subject. Right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Templeton, definitely. Yeah, I've learned a lot. Uh, and I see you have these books, the auctions at Graceland. They're very cool books. Oh yeah, I keep them for cross-reference yes, on sir. stuff. If stuff uh, Okay, hang on here just a second. We did a... Now this was a stuff that later on, after we put these books out, we did another version of a collectible book, what we considered the rarest 
of the items, of those items. So this right. was a little bit different. Uh, so this was 92, I think. Okay. 90. So that's the rarest of the rare. This and was, you showed me this guitar. It's in your case. Right. And I'll tell you something. I don't know if you'll do this for me, but I want to see inside that record player. Oh, okay. Can we do that? Well, we can do that. Yes, sir, we can do that. I just that. like to see what it looks like. I've never seen one in person. Right. But you were involved in these books. Uh, yes. In fact, we did one for Quintet Publishing over in England, and uh, they sent a photographer over here when I was living in Oak Ridge for about four days and shot my collection, turned our garage into a studio, and he was a professional. He... He did item by item. I messed up not getting a copy of those slides, but uh, they paid us. They paid us good money for it. So, uh, and they're still putting out condensed versions using the same same mm -hmm. photograph. And I bet you, uh, I had a guy recently um, <clears throat> that his name is escaping me right this moment, but uh, he has a book on the '50s collectibles. Okay. That he sent me copies of. He reached out. He lives in Europe, and he reached out to me. Uh, uh, after I put out the story about the collectibles, about the football story, where I talk about the shoes and right. then I go into the collectibles and all that. Right. And he actually has a, a new book on that. And I bet you it may be using those same photos. He, he might be. I do know there is a book coming out on everything from EPE that was put out all the way through, and I've been trying to get a copy of that book. Uh, hey, let's look at that record player. Yes, sir. You know, because I've done stories. Nipper, you're going to have to stay right there. Old Nipper one. Dog. Way up man right there. So I've never seen one of these in person, there's, so. There's two different kinds. Okay. Uh, let me get in the light. So it doesn't say, oh, yeah, it's right got there. Elvis there. Right. Because I remember seeing one that had something here. There was two different kinds that were sold by So that's so small, friends, that you may have one of these and not even know you have it. Right. Yep. So is that the only place that says Elvis? As far as I know. Okay. Uh, Interesting. And this one, I think's the one that was sold that had the three record. It was a tripod. had three uh, EP extended plays, which was the equivalent of his first album. Very, very rare to find. Uh, so if anybody's got that, you're interested. Absolutely. Uh, but those things just don't pop up. And uh, they easily go for over $1,000 for mint condition. I mean, it's just hard. How to much does a record player like this go for? Uh, they vary. I've seen them go as, I've seen them go as high as 14, 1500 and I've seen them go for as low as 300 So mm. it, just, it just depends on the buyer. Uh, um, uh, straight one-on-one -on -one deal. I couldn't. I, I'd. Uh, I would say about seven, eight hundred dollars. What I'd price one of that cool. at auction or who knows. I mean, so friends, you may have one of these boxes up in your attic, and you not even know exactly that it is. It says RCA Victor on the front, mm -hmm. and it says Elvis right there. So if you see one of these in your attic, get it out and look. You may have an Elvis record player, and you don't even know it. Exactly. Exactly. You never know what you're going to find in Grandma's attic. That's right. Tighten up, get up there and get it. And contact Ted. All there right. you go. Absolutely. What's the email, Ted? Coltsfan0024 at gmail.com. I'll put it right up top, friends. Yes, I'll sir. also put it down in the description area. Absolutely. Have any questions, send me an email. Basically, just an empty, but these things were well made for the. Uh, Oh, so it's still got the interior. Yeah, you have one of those bracelets down in there. Oh, it's got Elvis's face up at the top. Somebody stuck some girl put. Oh, really? That's, yeah. that's not from yeah, the factory. That's, that's not from okay. the factory. No. Uh, they had this color and they had a brown one, and uh, I had the brown one, which was even in better condition. And we made a swap, and I got two or three items for one. They, for whatever reason, they wanted the brown one, so that's how that come about. Uh, this last auction, I got this. This is a, yeah. We talked about this that you were going to get okay. That. Yeah. yeah, that's a, very cool. Anyway, from Hume's high. Yeah, so, so that's an original. That is the second uh, talent show he was in at Hume's High School, and uh, that was about a 
a little more than a month from when I was born. So <laughs> so was his name spelled correctly in this one? No, it is not. I didn't it, think it was. It's spelled Elvis <laughs> Presley. So, no, it wasn't. But that makes it... That, even more, more rare, right? That's right, buddy. Absolutely. Very cool. Absolutely. Uh, we got... Anyway. That's a giant record right there, King Creole. That is a uh, record uh, standee. That like for record, record store. Stores. Yeah, and this one here is too for the uh, gold record volume two. Very cool. Uh, those things always attract me if I can find one, but you don't find them too often. <laughs> uh, the Elvis Presley board game there has never been used. The pieces are still on the plastic. Nothing, wow. Nothing's bought that for $400 in 1983. So any of these things that you have, friends, <laughs> Ted may be interested in it. So definitely reach out to him. Oh, there's a lot more that uh, I don't have. So uh, anyway, I'm always on the lookout. Always on the lookout. Uh, I can tell you, I can show you one other item right. here. This is a plastic picture thing. It was given out at drive-ins at uh, 1956. Then there were three different uh Three of these were made, and this I've only got one, and I'm looking for the other two to complete the set. So did it have that picture in it? Yes. So, but they were given out as a memento, and then you, you could, yeah, okay. I think they were given away. Some places may have sold them for fifty cents or something, but uh, they was only given out at drive-ins, and they're very hard to find. So, very I'm trying cool. to get this set completed. He needs some of those. I need I need two of the three. So, anyway. very cool. Okay, that's uh, amazing. Great. Anyway, great to see this, Ted. Thank you so much. Well, I appreciate you coming by. Yes, sir. Having an interest in checking it out. Yes, sir. Incredible. Uh, if anybody's in the Knoxville area and wants to come by and see this firsthand, uh, if you'll just reach me at my email, I'll try to work with you on uh, setting up a tour of it. I always like meeting the fans and. Uh, you've got as many good stories as I do, I'm sure. So I can always learn from the other person. Thank you.